For a young baseball player in love with the game, every swing of the bat, every ball in the glove, every run to first base represents another step in the dream of making it to the big stage, the major leagues. They have to prove they're the best to have the slightest chance of being drafted by a major league team. But being drafted isn't enough to secure a spot on the biggest stage of them all. It's not like basketball or football where young athletes go straight to the pros. In baseball, everyone works their way up through the minor league system. That system has five levels. The rookie league, short season single A, single A, double A, and finally triple A. It's only when players reach AAA do they get a shot at the majors. Few get this chance. Only about 10% make it to the big stage. These are the stories of three players who came close to the ultimate dream. I am Mark Antoine Berube and I play for the Vermont Lake Monsters. In 2015, Mark was drafted as a relief pitcher by the Oakland Athletics. I always loved baseball, never thought I could do something with it. My name is Jerry Rosenthal. I played uh, in the early 60s. There was no draft when I was uh, in, in those days. Jerry signed a contract with the Milwaukee Braves and played two years with the organization, primarily as an infielder. Um, Tom Engel, I played in the New York, New York Mets organization. Tom was drafted in 1989 as a starting pitcher and reached AAA. But once I got to to camp with the Mets, then you realize, hey, this is going to be a little bit harder than maybe I thought it was because every kid there is good. These three players were on the field at different points in time. Mark was released in 2017, Tom in 1996, Jerry in 1962. For all of them, the minors ended up being a humbling and truly unforgettable experience. It's just hard to put words for it. When I first walked into the locker room, it was in Arizona, actually, the first time I met all the the, the guys from my draft class. My first thought was probably that like, everyone is going to be competing. Everyone's going to hate each other. But let's say you had a bad outing. I mean, other pitchers would just go to you, hey, you're fine, bro. Like, you get him next time. Uh, let's say you had a good one. Everyone was happy for you. I mean, maybe some people in the back of their mind were just, oh, I don't want him to do good. And I don't know. What I, what I learned was that you can't focus on that. You can't. You just can't focus on other guys. Focus on what you can do, do it as best you can, and whatever happens, happens. I guess I kind of knew that, I mean, minor league players are not making that much money, but I love baseball so much, and for me, it's just an experience that is worth a lot more than money. In the 1960s, however, money wasn't the only thing players had to worry about. You're just playing and trying to improve yourself, prepare yourself for the next level. You're not thinking about the system, but the system is, was pretty bad. It was segregated. In order to have integrated play or integrated living, you had to have a, a separate facility away from the white folks, so to speak. So it was integrated within the camp and we, had, we lived in barracks. And uh, uh, we, we ate together and we, and we beautiful fields, six beautiful fields. And that's where we trained. And any, any, any of the, the fellas that were, wanted to go into town, guys who had cars, they went in. A lot of the Afro-American players didn't go in for obvious reasons, so we had to do the shopping for them. We, as teammates, we supported each other, and you have to do that. And there were some guys that didn't, and they were sort of outliers. So my name is Rosenthal, obviously a Jewish-sounding name, and I had some incidents you know, with a player on my team in Yakima, and he was uh, what I would call pretty much a virulent anti-Semite. You just blocked that out and just played. There were antagonists, but there were also role models. Jerry credits two in particular. Jackie Robinson, he was the icon for me. I mean, he was just the greatest player. I mean, uh, you know, Mays was the best player I've ever seen, but for me, Robinson was my, my favorite player. My favorite manager was a fellow by the name of Jim Fanning. He was sort of set apart because most of the managers in my day were tough guys, chewed tobacco and they, not much education, etc. And uh, they've been in baseball all their lives and they, they're sort of, uh, sort of rigid in, the, in their approach. And, uh, and Jim was uh, different. He was sort of a player's manager.
The, the first stop that I made was in Kingsport, Tennessee. Um, we actually played on a diamond, a high school diamond that was also their high school football field. So the bleachers ran the length of all the way down the third base, all the way into left field. That was the football bleachers. And you know, then it's, it was fenced off and we had dirt where their part of the dirt was and the infield was on their field. And our locker room was their football locker room, which was, was not nice by any stretch. The shower probably had six heads in it and there were 25 guys on the team. So conditions were not great and they didn't improve much as I traveled throughout the Appalachian League. You know, you still have to go out there and perform no matter the conditions because everybody's playing on the same field, pitching off the same mound, hitting from the same batter's box. But what you do get to see in spring training is you get to see the big league complex and what those conditions are like. So, so that dream's always out there for the ideal field and the ideal conditions that you know. The further you progress in the minor leagues, they will get better. I had a little mental breakdown. I, like that's probably a reason why I got called down. I mean, mentally, you're trying to do too much. You put pressure on yourself when there's really, I mean, there is, but you don't have to put pressure on yourself. So I guess that was kind of hard. One huge lesson with baseball is really control what you can control. And I said like I could focus on a lot of negative stuff and, and fear a lot of stuff, but. I just choose not to because I look at what I can control and then so I, what I look, let's say I look at my career, I'm like, did I really do whatever I could do? And then my answer is yes, so I'm fine with whatever and then doesn't, I have no regrets and I can live with myself saying that. I mean, I'm ready for life just because, I mean, I am who I am because of baseball. I was uh, playing on the double-A team in, in spring training and uh, they released me after that. Uh, it took a long time to not feel that feeling of alienation that this is something something I lost in my life, you know. But when, when you get to your late 20s, you know it's over. I thoroughly enjoyed my time. I said, it's something I treasure for the, you know, all my all the years I've, I've lived and uh, I always will. I was 21, 22 years old and What's not to love? You're doing something that you love. Yeah! There comes a certain time in your career where you realize, you know what, the tools that I have aren't the tools that I need to get to the big leagues. And that realization is tough. It's tough to be the best for as long as you have been and then ultimately you're no longer the best. So dealing with that was tough. But also, you know, it was a good point in my life to realize, you know what, this part of my life's behind me, but there's a whole lot more ahead of me. When I went back to college, I was in a uh, broadcast journalism major, which ultimately led me to ESPN, which I've been there now for 17 years. I always said, if I can't play sports, I want to work in sports. And the unique thing about playing professional baseball is you have people from not only all over the United States, but from all over the world. And to put all those people together and to learn a little bit of a foreign language, to get to, to work and play alongside kids and, and men from other countries, it's, it's awesome. All those memories and the friendships, and it's all stuff that you'll keep with you for the rest of your life. If you have a dream, never look back and regret that you didn't give it everything you had to get there. Don't leave anything you know, on the table. Put it all out there, work your butt off. Um, study, work, work out, and don't, don't have any regrets because you don't wanna look back when you're my age or anybody else's age and say, boy, I wish I would've done this, or why didn't I do that? Do it all. There's so many resources out there for kids now to, to look, to research, to educate themselves that you need to put yourself out there and educate yourself and work hard and just have no regrets.